Hi, this is Marty Lecklutter, the product manager for Leap. This video is a demo of building Leap applications. It'll show you the basic steps involved. We're going to start with building an app from a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet we're going to use has got some sales information, information on regions, different sales reps, and product and pricing information. So we'll go into Leap and we'll create an app from Spreadsheet. This will save us some time as opposed to building it from scratch. We point to the spreadsheet and you can see that it sees the different sheets in the spreadsheet. Uh, we have a choice of widgets that we want on the form for the different fields. We'll change a couple to drop downs and uh, we'll uh, do a little editing on the name. Call it the Sample Sales Dashboard and click create and we now have an application if we go into view data we can see that it created a database table for each one of the sheets and imported the data uh, it also creates automatically some charts so depending on the data that it ingests it'll take a look at it and create some charts that make sense uh, it'll also create uh, a URL and an embed code, so if you want to put that in another site. So let's go in and take a look at the app that it created. So you can see the three different forms for the different sheets, and there's also an app page which serves as a dashboard. So we'll uh, put a title at the top of the dashboard. We'll call it the Sales Dashboard. And we'll make that a Heading 1. And while we're at it, let's add a uh, text field to the dashboard and we'll call this filter. So what we can do is filter on the uh, data grid based on some values we put into that. And um, to do so, we'll go into the data grid properties. And on the last tab in the properties, we're going to set the filter. In this case, uh, if region contains anything that's in this filter text box that we put there we'll uh, we'll use that and we'll flip over to the sales form and uh, we'll make a few edits here um, we'll bring the region select or radio button over to the right we'll adjust the column width here and, and you can put columns in however you want you can add sections with independent columns but we'll rearrange a few of these things so that it looks uh, a little bit more concise and the columns and rows that are left over you can go in there and you can delete those easily clean things up and uh, we'll go ahead and put a line in between uh, kind of a logical break in the, in the form so there's the form um, and we want to show rules so what I'm going to do and this this is probably somewhat trivial we'll just say that when the um, the month that's selected for the order is September we're gonna say September rates apply so maybe there's some special rates that they get based on a promotion in the month and uh, to set that rule we simply just click on in this case the uh, date selection and we say when the month equals 9 which is the numeric September we'll show that little piece of text so those are rules you can show hide enable disable things make your your forms dynamic and we can test this take a look at it and we see that the date is September and the uh, text is showing it's October and it's not so now we'll save the form the work that we've done and at this point we just have a design so we'll go ahead and say deploy and here it's going to update the application that was previously created from the spreadsheet and then we can go ahead and launch the updated uh, application. We can test the filter. We see that works. LAT for LATAM. And we can add uh, a new entry here. We see the form the way it looks based on our design. Uh, and here is the form with a record to, to update the record. So this is a, a CRUD pattern where you essentially just grab a record and update it or create a new one. Now let's go back in and edit this and we'll do a few different things. Um, for the order date, let's say that the date is always going to be, or at least by default, today's date. 
You know, so that's the starting point. And we'll put a couple of calculations in here. I mean, the spreadsheet had the calculations in it, but uh, they didn't come over in this, but we can easily add them. So we'll say that the subtotal is simply just the uh, quantity times the cost. And the total cost is going to be the subtotal plus the shipping cost. So we'll use an add here. So you can easily do these calculations on numeric fields. Now let's switch over to the topic of services. So the product dropdown has been populated by values in the spreadsheet. Uh, they're not dynamic though. Oh, well, let's make them dynamic. And to do so, what we'll do is connect this dropdown to that product database table through a service. So we pick the um, right service. And what we do is we map the product, in this case the product name, to the saved and displayed value of the dropdown. So now we can go ahead and uh, test this. And we see that it's working because it's coming back with those values. And we can also put in a couple of numbers and we see that the calculations are working as well. But the product table has also got the cost per unit and the shipping cost in it by product. So let's go back and in this case the on change event for the drop down what we're going to do is call another service. So you select the product and then once we know that you select the product we'll use that as the input for retrieving the information we want from the product table. And the information we want is the cost per unit and the shipping cost. So we map that over. So you can see how we're building an application where the database tables, they start to relate to each other. And what you're able to create is a bit more interesting. It's just a simple one page form. The next topic we'll get into is workflow. Let's go ahead and edit the application. We'll go over to the workflow tab in the IDE. Here you see a default level of workflow. You can pick it up, move it around, resize it. And we're going to add a new stage in action. We'll call this action approve. The next one is denied or deny. And we'll change the stages that those actions are pointing to to approved and denied. And then we'll go back to the submitted stage. We'll delete the update action. That's no longer an option. We'll pretty up the chart a little bit. See how you can see how you can move the items in the chart however you want. And then we're going to change the name of the submitted stage to credit check. You can change it in line in the diagram or you can also change it in the properties panel. When an action is invoked, what you can do is initiate an activity. So activities can be sending an email notification, calling a service to look somebody up, or perhaps assigning a user. So it makes sense that if uh, it was approved, that maybe the rep putting the original sales order in would, would know about it. The last item that we'll add here is a field in the form. We're going to add a number field. We'll call this credit score. We'll make this an integer. And then we're going to go over to the workflow tab again. And this time we're going to go to the stage visibility rules. And in the start stage, what we're going to do is hide the credit score. We don't want the person entering the order to see that. And then in the credit check stage, we're going to lock down everything else because we don't want the person doing the credit check to be able to change the order. So we simply just click on the appropriate icons. And 
And then we're going to add, lastly, a field to the data grid on the dashboard so we can see what workflow stage the record is in. So we'll save the app, deploy it again, and test it. So everything is in the credit check stage, which used to be the submitted stage. And we're going to go ahead and approve something. And when we get back to the dashboard, we see that it is approved. So we can go grab uh, another record. And in this case, we'll deny it. And when we get back to the dashboard, we see that it is denied. So in summary, you saw how we were able to build an app from a spreadsheet in as little as 10 minutes. You saw the simple, intuitive approach to building applications, how we use rules for dynamic behavior, services for getting information from other leap tables, formula for doing calculations, and workflow to automate processes. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.